Welcome to another production by the QB Medical Product Specialist Group. My name is Tom and I'm here today to speak with you regarding low-level laser therapy. So to begin with, a laser is a light amplification device that works by stimulated emission of radiation. Low-level laser therapy, LLLT, or cold laser, are terms used to describe these medium-powered lasers which are used in rehabilitation. Historically, these devices have been classified as non-thermal modality, meaning they do not generate heat within the tissue. Simply put, it's another form of light energy that can be used to elicit physiological response in the body, uh, similar to electrotherapy or ultrasound. There are many types of lasers which are used in a wide range of applications. Lasers are classified based on the power output in watts or milliwatts, and the associated risk for causing biological damage. As we ascend through the classes of laser from 1 to 4, the power output and relative risk of biological damage increase. In low-level laser therapy, we are typically referring to class 3A or 3B lasers. So now for a brief history of the development of laser technology. Albert Einstein provided the basic science and theory behind laser though it wasn't until 1960 when Theodore Maimon produced the first true laser. Maimon used a ruby crystal as a lasing medium to produce a red laser beam. Moving forward, Andre Mester first documented the therapeutic properties of lasers when he observed that lacerations in lab rats healed faster when a laser beam had been applied. There are four basic components to any laser. The optical cavity or lasing chamber, the active lasing medium, the power source, and the applicator to direct the laser beam. Here we have a picture of the optical cavity, also called the lasing chamber, where the amplification actually occurs. Within the lasing chamber, we have what is referred to as a lasing medium. When power is input to the chamber, the molecules of the lasing medium become stimulated, which is what allows for amplification. Contemporary lasers can be built with a variety of lasing mediums. Gallium aluminum arsenide is a commonly seen lasing medium used in therapeutic lasers. The power source, as the name suggests, is the component of the laser that actually provides energy into the system. One of the key elements to laser operation is the process known as stimulated emission. Stimulated emission occurs as energy is input into the lasing chamber and energy is absorbed by atoms of the active medium, driving them to a higher energy level. As those atoms return to low energy level, photons are released, which can go on to stimulate other atoms, amplifying the process. As amplification continues and more photons are released, they are directed out of one end of the lasing chamber in a concentrated beam. In therapeutic lasers, a laser applicator is used to direct the laser beam or beams to the targeted treatment area. Here we can see how the output of a laser differs from that of any other light source. There are three characteristics specific to laser beams. The first is monochromatic, meaning the light emitted is of a single wavelength and the same color. The second is collimated, meaning the light is unidirectional as compared to being scattered as you see from the normal light bulb there in the image. And the third is coherence, meaning that every wave emitted is in phase together. Being monochromatic, each individual laser emits energy at a single wavelength or color on the electromagnetic spectrum. Using differing active lasing mediums will result in different wavelengths of light being produced. This is important because different wavelengths have different penetration capabilities into tissue. Most cold lasers are going to be in the red to infrared or near infrared range, meaning they may be invisible to the human eye. Here we can see in a little more detail wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum and their perceived color to the human eye. Cold lasers typically have wavelengths of 600 nanometers and above, making them red to infrared or invisible to the human eye. It's important to note that while low-level laser therapy or cold laser is one form of light therapy, there are other forms of light therapy available as well. These commonly include superluminous diodes 
and light emitting diodes which may be in the same or similar wavelengths to a laser however they will not have as much penetration due to being non-collimated and or non-coherent. There are also cluster applicators available in some devices which will use a combination of laser, LED, and SLD. To be considered a cold laser or low level laser therapy device there must be at least one true laser diode on the applicator. This diode, as discussed previously, must be monochromatic, collimated, and coherent. Superluminous diodes can be useful in light therapy because they are high powered light source. However, they are non-coherent and therefore do not have as great of a depth of penetration as a true laser, making them more appropriate for treatment of superficial tissue. Standard LEDs are useful only on the treatment of very superficial tissue as they are low powered and have even lower depth of penetration as compared to an SLD. Cluster applicators may contain diodes of varying light sources in order to expand the size of the treatment area and elicit therapeutic effects at different penetration depths. Now that we understand what a cold laser is, let's take a look into some of the specific treatment parameters. Among these we have wavelength, measured in nanometers, power, measured in milliwatts, continuous or pulsed, which is referred to as the duty cycle, the energy density, measured in joules per square centimeter, and the treatment duration, typically measured in seconds. Wavelength is one of the key defining characteristics of laser energy. As we know, light travels in waves, so the wavelength is the distance between two peaks or one iteration of a wave. It's measured in nanometers and denoted by the symbol lambda. Wavelength is important in therapy because it determines the depth of penetration. In therapeutic purposes, lasers are typically in the 600 to 1000 nanometer range, putting them in the red to near infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. As we can see here, the wavelengths in the lower end of the spectrum used for therapy are in the higher end of the visible spectrum, giving us red light. As we get into the longer wavelengths used in therapy, we approach the near-infrared to infrared end of the spectrum, meaning these lasers are invisible. The gallium arsenide laser will give you a wavelength of 904 nanometers, and the gallium aluminum arsenide will give you anywhere from 780 to 890 nanometers. Again, these are two of the more common active mediums you'll find in therapeutic lasers. The next parameter we need to be concerned with is power of the device. Power is the rate at which energy is emitted from the applicator. In low level laser therapy devices this is measured in milliwatts and the reason we need to be concerned with power is it's going to affect other parameters of the treatment. A higher power level will require a lower treatment time as well as a higher power level contributing to a deeper depth of penetration. And as with other modalities such as ultrasound we have the option to change the duty cycle as well so we can apply a higher power in a pulsed mode. Following power output we have the power density or energy density which is measured in joules per centimeter squared. This is equivalent to the power output divided by the size of the treatment area. Although cold laser therapy is typically very safe there are a few contraindications typically associated with light sensitivity. Some of these include cancer, radiation of the eyes, exposure to light sensitive areas over the fetus or uterus during pregnancy, the thyroid gland, or on a symptom of unknown cause. Now let's talk about some of the positive physiological effects of cold laser therapy. These include acceleration of tissue healing, increased localized circulation, reduction of pain and swelling, and decreased inflammation. FDA has cleared low-level laser therapy devices for the treatment of carpal tunnel syndrome and for the treatment of neck and shoulder pain of musculoskeletal origin. The use of infrared light in general has been cleared for localized circulation, 
muscle joint aches, pain and stiffness, relaxation of muscles for muscle spasms, and for arthritis. So currently the FDA has only approved low-level laser therapy for treatment of a handful of indications. This is an emerging technology with a lot of promising research being conducted to show that it could be useful in treating a number of other conditions. For example, wound healing as documented with Mester's rats, musculoskeletal conditions, trigger point, inflammatory conditions, pain both acute and chronic, joint disorders, just to name a few. And now for some key points on application of laser therapy. Application of cold laser is very easy, feels very similar to ultrasound, but there's a few key differences we need to keep in mind. Initially, the skin over the treatment area should be cleaned with alcohol prior to treatment. No coupling media or gel is used during the treatment. The laser head applicator is applied directly to the skin above the treatment area. Unlike ultrasound, there's no movement necessary during the treatment. Uh, we'll apply a stationary technique, putting the laser head directly over the treatment area and holding it there for the duration. You'll want to maintain firm, direct contact with the skin. This is important because pushing down on the treatment area will squeeze the blood out of the treatment area. That's important because blood will absorb the laser energy and prevent it from hitting the target tissue. And finally, and most importantly, both the patient and the clinician must use the manufacturer provided protective eyewear at all times during the treatment. Even though the laser may be invisible, it can still cause ocular damage if applied directly to the eye. This concludes our initial introduction to low level laser therapy, LLLT, or cold laser, by the QB Medical Product Specialist Group. If you have any questions, or would like any additional information, please visit our website at www.qbmedical.com. Thank you for stopping by, and we look forward to seeing you at our next presentation.